Yes, good morning. So in principle, I think I should be ready. <laughs> okay. Uh, what should I do? I should, uh, I should share the screen, I guess. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Then. Good morning, Professor. Welcome yeah, to our uh, virtual conference. May I help you? Yeah, uh, I tried to share the screen. There is a uh, screen share uh, on the uh, on your screen. So, do you, uh, do, you uh, do you see it? Can you see it? I see the the. But I have a message that the organizer has deactivated the shared screen. Try again, please. Okay, try again, please. Uh, okay, you can try again, please. Uh, yes. Then uh, do do you see do you see it? Do you view it? Yes. Oh. You can see it clearly. Okay. Uh, uh, should I go to full screen or not? If you are ready, yes, you can uh, start your presentation. Thank okay. You. Okay. So good morning, everybody. And uh, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me at this uh, conference. Well, this is uh, virtual due to the uh, COVID, unfortunately, but still, uh, I hope uh, people will like it. So I'm going to speak about silicine medicine and the Lancet Gate. And uh, uh, this I start with, is, as everybody knows, this started with uh, uh, graphene, in fact. Uh, graphene is a, a form of carbon at the nanoscale. And uh, the story, in, in fact, started in 1996 with the uh, discovery of the fullerene molecule, the famous CCT buckyball, then uh, the carbon nanotubes, and then, as, as I mentioned, the 2D dimensional graphene. All of them have got uh, buckyball is a Nobel Prize uh, in chemistry, graphene indeed, Nobel Prize in physics, and the nanotube got a Kavli Prize in physics. Okay, the structure of the fullerene was inspired by the uh, pavilion of the United States for the Expo 67. So there is a, a nice connection between architecture and molecular structure of the CCT, C60, C60, the buckyball, which is like a soccer ball, in fact, as everybody knows. Okay, so graphene, uh, is indeed the, the mother of all uh, 2D materials, I would say. Uh, graphene is natural. It peeled from graphite. It is flat, as uh, uh, min minute uh, spin orbit coupling. And as I mentioned, it is foliated from graphite. Okay, now the point is, uh, can we make something graphene-like, but instead of using carbon, using silicon, because silicon, this is the, this is the element, the material of all electronics and uh, uh, all our uh, development in this era. So uh, I presented first this uh, so-called uh, new wave at the uh, American Physical March meeting in Dallas in uh, uh, 2011. And this appeared in the Discover magazine. It was not yet published, so I took some risk at that time, <laughs> but it was published soon. And I've just to, to mention what's the difference between so-called silicine, the term was introduced by uh, Guzman, Verri and Woon in 2007. Uh, this was Taibani calculation at that time. So uh, the difference of graphene, graphene is flat, but uh, silicine is buckled. 
as you can see here. So there is a, a slight difference between the A and B plane. But it is very interesting because it has a band gap, it has a sizable uh, spin optic coupling, and it's in principle a 2D topological insulator. Uh, I have to recall that, in fact, the very first conjecture appeared in FISREV B 10 years before the advent of graphene. In fact, in 1994, by two theoreticians, they did at that time a DFT calculation. It was Takeda and Shuraishi. Uh, now they have got uh, a large number of citation, but if you look, you know, until 2011, they are on only 18 citation, less than one per year, meaning that nobody believed that SP2-like silicin or germanin could ever exist because at variance with graphene, which stems from graphite, there is no parent lamella silicon or germanium crystal in nature comparable to graphite. So next, there were uh, uh, more recent DFT calculation, especially by uh, Seymour Kanjirov in uh, Ankara at that time in Turkey. And now it has a large number of citations, nearly 2000, as you can see here. So the buckling is indicated here. The buckling is 0.4 angstrom for silicine, a bit larger, 0.6 angstrom for um, germanin, but the interesting point is that uh, if you look at the bands around the Fermi level, you have a crossing of the pi and pi star bands, like in graphene, in fact, very similar electronic structure, and also linear dispersion. So in fact, the uh, silicine is Closer, it's not exactly sp2, but it's closer to sp2 than to sp3. Uh, uh, the, the value is 2.27 exactly, um, uh, but it's a Dirac material. So there are a lot of uh, predicted uh, properties. Uh, one of them very important is the electronically tunable band gap. The other one I have already mentioned, this is a monolayer topological insulator. Um, then it could uh, indeed uh, in a ribbon show helical edge states. It, uh, it can have very, very high mobilities. If you look at the, at the table, you see that uh, mobilities are for electron and holes, for example, in Germany, are even higher than for graphene. This is all freestanding uh, uh, feature in it of silicine and Germany. But also um, uh, Izawa-san uh, in Japan uh, predicted the possibility to use the topological property to make a topological field effect transistor. And there is also prediction there are a number of predictions for superconductivity. Here I have mentioned a case eventually of phonon mediated uh, superconductivity. Interestingly, you know, all these 2D materials, which are graphene like, they have indeed a honeycomb structure like graphene. But I just want to recall for mathematicians that uh, the, the so called honeycomb conjecture. Uh, was only proved at the beginning of the century, if I'm correct. Uh, so in 2000 something, 2001, I think. So it means that the, the classical honeycomb connection that any partition of the plane into regions of equal era as a perimeter, at least that of a regular hexagonal, hexagonal honeycomb tiling. It was only demonstrated mathematically at the beginning of this century. That's interesting. But the, the, the bees, they know how to do it for holiday millionaires. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so let's uh, start with silicine. So I show here the so-called archetype phase, which we grew in 2012 
we published, in fact, in 2012, uh, we grew it on a silver, one 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 uh, single crystal phase. So the inspiration was uh, um, observing this so-called very nice uh, uh, flower pattern in uh, scanning tunneling imagination. Uh, the inspiration that there was hidden a honeycomb structure. And indeed, we confirm this uh, honeycomb start, uh, structure start, starting from the uh, uh, honeycomb array, laying it down on the silver uh, one moment surface, letting everything relax, relaxed. And we got a very similar simulated STM image, again, the so called flower pattern. And now we understand why we have this. Uh, nice uh, uh, flower pattern instead of the honeycomb, because in STM imaging, only the protruding uh, silicon atom that sit more or less right on top of the silver atom are visualized. So in fact, this is a three by three reconstructed silicine matching a four by four um, silver 111 supercell. And the in-plane, this is very important that we come to that later. The in-plane silicon silicon distance is 2.23 angstrom, which is very close to that of freestanding uh, silicon calculated, for example, by Seymour Kanjerov. Okay. Uh, then we we could see next the year after in the same flower pattern in non-contact FM imaging. Did, and this shows that, the, uh, in effect, uh, geometry is, is uh, governing the imaging process. And it was only in, 2000, uh, in, in 2017, uh, using now near contact uh, AFM imaging, that Onoda et al. in Japan could directly visualize, in fact, the hidden honeycomb structure. And it's shown here in this nice uh, uh, PRB paper. And again, they fly, they directly measure the in-plane silicon silicon distance of 2.22 angstrom. Okay, then uh, the group, especially the group of uh, uh, Hu Kui in uh, Beijing, in China, they, uh, they demonstrated the presence of uh, of a nice uh, Dirac cones near the the corner of the of the small brilliant zones here, uh, but on the side of the silver brilliant zone. Uh, okay, that's uh, maybe some advertising, you know. So we published our paper in uh, 2012 in PRL. This is uh, as we had mentioned. We have now more than 2,400 citations. And if you look at PRL, this is the second most cited PRL just after the physics Nobel Prize winning collaboration on uh, uh, great wave in uh, 2017. And I've just uh, from uh, uh, Clarivet Analytics, just to, rem to recall that since 1970, there are more than 50 million research paper, paper published, and only 6,000 have reached more than 2,000 citations. And this is since uh, uh, 1970. We have just published in 2012. OK. It was not easy to publish, I have to convey. For us, it was really a long march, I would say. Because before sending to PRL, we had tried the science, nature, nature materials, and they were always, they didn't pass the editor screening. And here you can see, for example, the answer from the editor uh, of uh, nature materials. Okay, you say, the, okay, well, 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 well. And in the end, he, he, he didn't accept it on the reason that another paper had appeared before this paper by Lalmi et al, so-called epitachial growth of a citizen sheet, 
It had appeared in APL in 2010, but it is completely wrong. And I will show you that later. Okay, now uh, some uh, variants of silicin. Uh, for example, one day I go quickly because time is passing. One day nano ribbons. And we have shown that they are massively parallel. They have unique widths, eight angstrom or 16 angstrom. We call them single or double strand. They form an order structure, and we have demonstrated uh, recently by difficult calculation that they are, and this is amazing, they are entirely formed with pentagonal uh, tiles, you know. So this, has, this is, in fact, a form of uh, uh, pentasilicine, and you know, pentagraphene has been um, uh, shown to be, in principle, stable in DFT calculation, but never realized. Pentagraphene has not been realized. But here we have realized uh, pentasilicine nanoribbons. They show very strong uh, quantized states, very sharp core levels, flat dispersion perpendicular to the nanoribbon, very strong dispersion along nanoribbons with the opening of a gap. And the gap is about 0.6 CV. Okay, the very nice thing, this was shown by the group of uh, uh, Professor Takagi in Japan with uh, Maki Kawai. And uh, you can lift off these uh, nano ribbons with the STM tip. It means that you make freestanding uh, uh, pentasilicin nano, nano ribbons. Many people claim that this would be impossible, but they have made this to the force, I would say. Okay. Uh, if we come again to 2D, there are different uh, phases of silicon and silver. And one of them, uh, many of them are shown in, but one of them is a slightly stretch, root seven, root seven in terms of silicon, and it matches uh, roots 13 by root 13 uh, silver supercell. Uh, but very interestingly, if you cool it down to 4K, you obtain this very weird vortex-like uh, structure. And maybe we can fancy, we can guess that it's, ki it's a kind of, uh, of nanoscale uh, schemium. Because in principle, due to the buckling, you could have uh, uh, some magnetic moments involved. OK, another interesting point. Uh, if you hydrogenated the flower pattern, then you get uh, another pattern, which is shown here on the right. In fact, this was first shown by the group of uh, Hukewi in Beijing, but uh, we continued it in Marseille. And you see, this is very interesting because now what you, you, what you image, this is hydrogen atom on top. And uh, this hydrogen can be released reversibly perfectly at 200 Celsius. And if you calculate, it's a very high hydrogen storage density, in fact. OK, next, uh, we have obtained very recently another weird uh, 2D silicon structure, now on, on aluminum, 111. And what we believe, uh, we have calculated this, we believe that this is a Kagome-like uh, silicon. So we have published this uh, just recently. It has very interesting pro pro property, Diracone. And uh, uh, in principle, for freestanding Kagome lattice, it should have flat bands. But at the moment, we have not yet uh, found those flat bands, maybe because of the interaction with the substrate. We can also grow multi-layer silicine. So we have started this uh, for the first time in Marseille. It grows like a pyramid in different steps. But all the steps are the same, so-called Ruthie-Brousy structure in terms of silicine. And it has very strong Dirac feature, Dirac cones. And it has been shown by the group of IDU in uh, Australia that it is really, uh, as we had uh, proposed, a lamellar uh, structure. OK, if we look again to Clarivet analytics, uh, you know, they publish every four years what they call research fronts, so which are uh, very important uh, uh, new trends in physics. And uh, in 2014, you know, 
the growth and property of silicin was the first uh, research shown just after the Higgs boson, the global neutrino data, the non-linear muscle gravity, but the very first in condensed matter physics at that time. Okay, uh, so since then, we have gone down, as I mentioned, down the column, so silicin, germanin. We have grown also stannin, like, but the first group was in uh, Shanghai, in uh, the group of Jifeng Jia in Shanghai. And very recently, we have grown plumbing with a group of uh, Junji Yura in uh, Nagoya in Japan. So this is the, the, the feature here, the, some, the indication of silicin, Germany, uh, uh, stannin, and plumbing. Now all the column has been realized. This is the example we got first on uh, Germany. I don't go into detail, but we could confirm with uh, the effect calculation simulation of the STM images that we got, and the stability, especially which is uh, which is very stable on, uh, again in this case. So this is another way of preparing Germany. This is done by uh, Professor Jenny Yura in Nagoya. Now by segregation uh, from a thin film, silver film grown on a uh, German one on crystal. You got a very nice image, but difficult to interpret, but uh, it was possible to interpret it as Germany. Similar thing with tannin grown again by the group uh, Jenny Yuara in Nagoya. Now you have very clearly honeycomb structure, uh, no problem. And recently, uh, together uh, collaborating, we managed to grow a lateral heterostructure of uh, German and tannin, uh, combining segregation and deposition, as shown here. And this is the, the explanation. It's not trivial because the, the superstructure are delicate, but uh, the group of Jenny knew you are, uh, and us managed to interpret all this. Uh, plumbing, so this is the last in the column, uh, in the column 14, and uh, this has been advertised indeed, and this is how it appears. You first, by segregation, what is, what is obtained, uh, deposition and segregation, this is a weak pattern, which is a, uh, an alloy, in fact, which resembles uh, very much the so-called uh, 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 nano cube, the water cube, uh, which is the Olympics uh, swimming pool aquatics uh, in Beijing in 2018. This is exactly the same structure. It is so-called mathematically, it's uh, the so-called wear felon structure, uh, which you cut uh, and which is better than the Kelvin problem. The Kelvin, uh, you know, Lord Kelvin, you know, he asked how space could be partitioned into cells of equal volume with the least era between them. And he guessed this was this, but he never demonstrated. But this, uh, this, uh, this con so-called Kelvin conjecture lasted for more than 100 years until it was beaten in the late, uh, in the beginning of the 1990s by the wear filling structure, which is 0 0.3 less <laughs> which is open, which is better than the Kelvin conjecture, but uh, it is not proved to be op optimal. And the, the water cube was based on this. Just recently, I, I think just a couple of weeks ago, appeared the formation of, of selenium from selenium by a group in the Vosibius. And again, from the very last research from last year, now you see that antimonin uh, arsenin, bismuthin, so from the next column has been uh, one of the very hot research from. So perspectives. So perspective, this is these 2D materials. They have now uh, eventually a strong spin of the coupling and you can expect the quantum spinal effect indeed. So there are a number of properties. Some of them have been realized, for example, the, the the field effect transistor has been obtained with silicine with a group of uh, uh, Akin Vande and Alessandro Molly a few years ago. So this is uh, maybe a perspective for uh, 
going, uh, having Moore's law going further away. So this is the, the, the nano FET, the small FET. But you remember, <laughs> I mentioned that uh, uh, Game and his wife, they didn't think that this was ever possible. But this has been done, and this is the way how they, DJ like, Kinvandi and uh, Alessandro Moll made it. So it has ambipolar collect, uh, character. It has not so bad mobilities, uh, about hundreds. Uh, it's in air, you know, because indeed they had to take everything um, out of the vacuum chamber to process the system and make uh, manufacture the, the feed effect transistor. It lasts uh, not very long, you know, in air, just a couple of minutes or so, but it's approved, you know. If you can encapsulate, this will last indeed much more later. And indeed, the one solution is to, to make it not with a single layer channel, but to, with a multi layer channel. And this is uh, uh, then much more resistant. In fact, the silicin is an oxidation resistant uh, coating. So now I move uh, to the soft synthesis because instead of using, which is a bit expensive, vacuum uh, growth or so, some uh, groups uh, managed to grow silicin, Germany in this case here, by soft uh, wet uh, chemical processes. And uh, this is a case of application in medicine. Indeed, the silicon is uh, non-toxic, you know, so you can uh, apply it, uh, for example, for cancer therapy in many cases, and this is here the example of a tumor uh, in the brain. But this is made from uh, uh, coated silicin, uh, uh, few layer silicin or single layer silicin, which you can inject as a drug. Okay, just quickly something about the uh, Lancet gate, as I mentioned, you know, in Marseille, a uh, very famous professor, uh, Didier Raoult, proposed a treatment of the, of the COVID with uh, a, a standard classical uh, uh, medicine uh, drug, you know. But this, uh, uh, this um, raised uh, an enormous um, scandal, in fact, you know, because two elite medical journals uh, had to retract their, uh, their paper. They claimed that the hydroxychloroquine was dangerous, but it has been used by billions of people, including myself, who go to, to uh, Africa or to Southern America or to Asia, you know, in hot countries, you know. Everybody uses it because it's a very good drug against malaria. And it's very efficient, for example, I don't know in Turkey, but I know that in, uh, in um, Morocco, for example, all people uh, are treated with uh, uh, hydroxychloroquine and, uh, and there are very few dead people in, uh, if you look at the, uh, at the fight in, uh, in Morocco, for example. I just recall that uh, uh, silicine, the real honeycomb was just observed directly in 2017, but this group, which I mentioned, Lalmi et al, they claim that they had obtained silicin in 2010, so before us, but the silicon silicon distance was much too small. Remember, the real distance is 2.2 angstrom, and this was, in fact, we could prove it, uh, and this is very known from a paper by Nobel laureate Ertel uh, 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 in, in Germany that this is just the reversed uh, imaging of a, of a of a silver one on that surface, so in fact, any noble metal surface. Okay, so many people have, have, have noticed it and, and published this in paper that this, this was totally in error, as we had done indeed. And uh, however, and this is what I call now the Apple Gate, the uh, editors, they refuse to retract it. So they prefer to deliberately continue to spread for scientific information. You know, the Lancet gate lasted only one month or, or something like this, but this lasts for, for 10 years now. This is crazy. Anyway, you know, there are many crazy things. This is in other eras in astronomy. Very recently, maybe you have seen this, you know, a paper was published in Nature Astronomy 
uh, they observed phosphine in the cloud of Venus, and they said, well, that maybe this is of a, of a biotic origin. But this is crazy because phosphine has been seen in, in other planets and even around the stars, and nobody claimed that this was a biotic origin. So this is just uh, what was called by uh, Louis d'Entrecourt, Hollywood, Hollywood science. But Hollywood science is going to the major journal now. Okay, so next quickly, you know, what is the main, main train I would say? I would say now the prospects are uh, for Majoranas. So this is uh, also the thing. You see the train with, uh, uh, with the, those 2D mat materials. So starting with the birth of silicin, now many, many scenes, so-called scenes have been realized. Uh, so there is a hunt for the topology cubic. Uh, and the challenge is indeed the hardware to fabricate. Uh, so this is um, just I have to end now. This is the, my uh, summary. But I would like to to end up with uh, the number of scenes that have been made now since uh, 2012, and even in the column uh, six now with selenium and tellurium also, and. Uh, because I like, if you remember the, the Bagminster Fuller uh, Expo uh, and the structure of the filarine. Uh, you remember the structure of, uh, of the alloy, surface alloy on top of which we have uh, plumbing, uh, the idea stemmed from the uh, wear fill and structure, which is the cover of the, of the swimming pool of the, of the Olympic games in Beijing. And now I want to thank all my collaborators, many collaborators indeed, uh, indicated here uh, in Europe, indeed, in, uh, especially in France, Italy, uh, Spain, Germany. My uh, good friends in Turkey, you know, Seymour Kanjirov and collaborators, Hassan Sain in Izmir and collaborator. Indeed, my very strong collaboration with the Professor Jenny Yurara in Japan and collaboration in Shanghai with a group of uh, uh, Jim Hun Jia and the group of uh, Wing Chun Tang in Chongqing. And this is the end of it. So I thank you all very much for your attention. I hope I'm not a bit too long. Well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor, uh, for uh, this uh, nice presentation and uh, this uh, nice uh, research. Thank you so much. Uh, just now, uh, we can have questions. Uh, I want to announce uh, all our participants uh, to use uh, the chart section. If there is a, uh, if uh, do you have any question uh, to our uh, professor, uh, please uh, you can write your questions to chat bar. Yeah, I think that's the best way. I think that's the best way. Okay. Yes. We, we can we can wait a few minutes uh, to uh, have questions. Uh huh. Okay. Otherwise, you know, I could answer question by email if time is, uh, is too short. Uh, no problem. People can send me questions and I would be happy to answer.
Yes, I think uh, there is uh, no question uh, for now. Uh, so if, so if, if they like it, people can send me, can email me. And then yes, I of course. Uh, if uh, any participant uh, have a question, uh, you can uh, send an email to professor uh, and also you can uh, send us uh, any questions for uh, this presentation uh, to uh, transfer uh, your questions to Professor Galilei.